Of the many structures at work in the human body, the skull is among the most complex and is responsible for the critical task of protecting the brain. At the center of the skull is the sphenoid bone, a structure so integral to the skull it has been termed the keystone bone. The sphenoid bone is the only bone that articulates with each of the other seven cranial bones. Equally unique is the shape of the sphenoid bone due to its resemblance to a butterfly, complete with two pairs of outstretched wings. The sphenoid bone is situated towards the medial anterior portion of the skull and makes up parts of the middle cranial fossa, the eye orbits, and the lateral wall of the skull. The sphenoid bone is located posterior to the facial bones, inferior to the frontal and parietal bones, and between the temporal bones. It is deep in the skull with the ethmoid bone located on the superior anterior portion of the sphenoid bone's body. The sphenoid bone can be divided into four parts. The lesser wings, the greater wings, the body, and the pterygoid processes. Within the body of the sphenoid bone is a pair of cavities known as the sphenoidal sinuses. The sphenoidal sinuses are part of the larger group of four paired paranasal sinuses. The cella tersica is the central structure on the superior surface of the sphenoid body. Translated to Turkish saddle, the cella tersica structure is true to its name and shaped much like a saddle with a seat that provides a protected depression to hold the pituitary gland. The foramen Lacerum are located just inferior and posterior to the saddle on either side. These paired foramina are somewhat trigonal in shape with jagged edges. The posterior border of the foramen lacerum is created primarily by the apex of the petrous portion of the temporal bone. A few minor blood vessels and nerves pass through the foramen lacerum and emerge from the external opening of the carotid canal, which is located on the temporal bone. Shortly after birth, the external opening of the foramen lacerum fills with cartilage. The greater wings and the lesser wings attach to the body of the sphenoid bone such that they are angled perpendicular to each other with the lesser wing superior to the greater wings and in the horizontal position. The lesser wings of the sphenoid bone are horn shaped with points protruding posteriorly. The greater wings are much larger than the lesser wings, hence their name, with a concave shape that projects laterally. The lateralmost edge of the greater wing joins at sutural joints with the frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone, and zygomatic bone to form a portion of the cranial wall. The greater wings also make up a portion of the posterior eye socket 
which can be viewed from the front of the skull. The slit found between the inferior border of the lesser wing and the superior border of the greater wing is known as the superior orbital fissure. The oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve, and abducens nerve all pass through the superior orbital fissure. The nerves are cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, respectively, and they are largely responsible for eye movement. Various veins also pass through the superior orbital fissure. The optic canal can be viewed from the anterior aspect and is in the posterior of the eye orbit, just medial to the superior orbital fissure. The optic canal can also be viewed from the posterior aspect and is anterior to the cella tertrica. At the junction of the medial border of the lesser wing and the body of the sphenoid bone. The optic nerve, known as cranial nerve 2, extends from the posterior of the eye, passes through the optic canal, and continues to the brain. The inferior orbital fissure is visible when the sphenoid bone is fully articulated and is created by the inferior border of the greater wing in conjunction with the medial border of the zygomatic bone and the lateral border of the maxilla bone. The zygomatic branch of the trigeminal nerve, known as cranial nerve 5, and various blood vessels pass through the inferior orbital fissure. The medial portion of the greater wing contains three pairs of foramina. The superior most foramen is the foramen rotundum and it passes the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve. Just posterior is the foramen ovale which passes the mandibular nerve in a more lateral position is the foramen spinosum, which passes the meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve is the largest of the three branches of cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve. The foramen spinosum often presents in the skull with variations in size and location. Occasionally, one of the pair will be absent, requiring the meningeal artery, which typically passes through the foramen spinosum, to instead pass through the foramen ovale. The pterygoid process projects inferiorly from the junction of the sphenoid bone's greater wing and body. The pterygoid process descends into the inferior portion of the skull and provides a site of attachment for various muscles that facilitate chewing, including the masseter muscle and the lateral and medial pterygoid muscles. Due to its deep position in the skull, trauma to the sphenoid bone is rare, occurring in approximately 4% of basilar skull fractures. Fractures of the sphenoid bone 
are typically due to very high energy accidents, causing massive trauma to the region. A skull fracture can tear the meninges, the membranes that surround the brain, which may cause a leak in cerebral fluid, cranial nerves may be severed, and damaged blood vessels may cause severe hemorrhaging. Such basilar skull fractures are common in motor racing accidents and are typically fatal. The arrow shown in the CT image points to a fracture of the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. With its complex structure, striking shape, and integral position in the skull, the sphenoid bone plays a crucial part in the functioning of the human body. This video was prepared as part of the course requirements for human anatomy at Saddleback College.